This is step 13 of the 14 steps found in the art of storytelling. This one here deals with um, audience participation. Our storytellers will give you some samples of ways that they can pull the audience into the telling of the story. Remember, I haven't given them much notice here. Basically, the camera is still going and they have to give you what comes off the top of their head. Still, I think you'll enjoy hearing these, uh, these experts in how they can pull the audience in to participating in the telling of the story. Well, I think uh, just off the top of my head, of what I what I just kind of discovered in that last exercise, the the waves and the gulls uh, in making that chant that "Be who you are," that could be a good audience participation thing. Where uh, I think I would probably like I could divide the audience into three groups, or I could have three individuals come up um, and just kind of teach them this. Thing. You know, okay, you're going to be the waves crashing in against the, the beach. Uh, and the sound that you're going to make is B, B, B. And have, just have them repeat that. And then move on to the next group and say, you're going to be the seagulls flying overhead. And you're going to be cawing. And your caw is going to be, uh, it's going to sound like whoo. Whew, whew, and uh, get them doing that, and and then um, the final group. Okay, you're going to be the 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 waves rushing back out through whistling, kind of whistling through the stones as they go back out into the water goes back out into the into the sea, and what what your sound is going to be is huar, huar, huar. Uh, a song could be done. I could do a little repeating song that is gone through, but I think better is to do the uh, do something with the memory hook, do something with the cat. Uh, and I, I I don't think in this particular case I would uh, train my audience to do it. I think I would just hesitate and and and, and start off with the cat, and then you know, the problem was. The cat. And then by the third time when I do that, I think I would just say, and he had a he had an idea. An idea about the cat. The cat and have and and have the audience. So I think I would bring them in and have them every time from then on when I repeat that phrase is have do the little pause, do the do the do the little hand gesture and let them say something. So I think that's how I'll, I'll do it. Uh, this is a short story. It's a brief story, but there are places where audience participation could be brought in. Uh, with young children, it's always so simple. Uh, the sounds are a quick way. So every time the gnat is moving and doing the zzz, zzz, a simple hand to the ear, and the children all join in with zzz. Uh, we could even expand the idea of the swarm of gnats, so we have lots of them and one little gnat flying away. Uh, we could actually have the bull mooing, the cows in the distance. Um, another way for audience participation, if I have young children, I would even bring them up, maybe perhaps let one child uh, extend his arms that could be the, the horns of that big bull, and have another child come swarming in and just land right on the tip of that. Um, 
Sometimes I think with adults we shy away from audience participation because very often you can tell when you have an audience of adults because they lean back and fold their arms. <clears throat> I'm the adult here. But I find uh, nursing homes are a great place to get that audience participation. And so I might have them do the sounds and act out the, the different animals. Um, I was going to add more characters to the story, perhaps a, a fox and a, a crow and maybe a, a squirrel. Um, and as he meets these different animals, uh, they cry out with uh, a particular phrase each time. And of course I would ask the audience to do a call and response with me on that part of it. Uh, and then he would have a reply to them and they would reply back. Um, uh, so again, we get that back and forth with, with the audience. Part of the story, I added the, you know, the clickety-click, the clickety-click of, of his nails on, the, on that board. Well, there's different places in the story where we could do that together with the kids. You know, the clickety-click, clickety-click. What did it sound like? Clickety-click, clickety-click as we go on. audience participation is a wonderful tool and I, and I just love to use it myself um, and in this story I, I can think of several you can first off if it's a younger group um, ask them what they think a miser is because it's not a common word and just just discuss that with the group uh, if it was a classroom or a, a library setting a miser and make sure we come to the point that he's very stingy with his money he doesn't spend his money and then I would perhaps say he had gold, and where do you think he kept it? And people would guess, you know, in his fireplace, behind a brick, you know, under the floorboards, and, um, and then try to explain to them that perhaps the house would burn down, they wouldn't want the gold to be destroyed, so he would bury it outside in his, by his tree. I can see actions. Um, I can see having a, uh, a young audience trying to pull or trying to dig, 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 and then pull, pull, pull the box open. And then very carefully everybody could go, and we would see our coins and go, ah, and we could have everybody go, ah, and that would be fun for a younger audience. Um, and then of course they would all go, ah, when the, when the thief stole it. If I was really brave, I would actually have a little little black coat and a little ugly hat and have a little kid come up and be my miser and he could use the word my gold my gold where's my gold and perhaps even have a prop of a little tin box with some fake gold and then a second second child uh, be the uh, passerby and he could just put the stolen down So the sons took the grapes from the vines, harvested them into baskets, and then they needed to make them into wine. Now who knows anything about making wine from grapes? Yes, of course they have to be smashed. How did they smash them? They didn't have any machines. How many of you have ever seen that I Love Lucy episode where she's <laughs> standing with her friend in the big vat Stomping on the grapes. 